against Bulldogs. SC State three and six following a one point victory over High Point their last time out. They're in a building situation right now in their conference. Duke wins the opening tip and we are underway. Great to have you with us. Wendell Moore coming in averaging 18.7 rebounds a game. And Carroll also 18 and 7. Here's more outside the three. And the swing for the corner. Inside and a quick block. Davis got all over that one. Jamel Davis is 6'9 freshman. And he can do that. Tough shot in the paint by Cameron Jones. And now the deflection. First block of the night by Mark Williams. Yeah, speaking of he can do that, Mark Williams won the best. 11th nationally over three block shots per game, which leads the ACC. And he has been a dominant force over the last five games for the Blue Devils. And the starting five for the Duke Blue Devils. The Trevor kills we just saw along the baseline. Duke, yeah, ran out of steam against Ohio State, as you made the point, Corey. Had 23% shooting in the second half, going one for eight from three-point land after a very good first half. A great first half, but only ended up four for 14 from three-point range in that game. And talking with Coach K earlier, he let us know that they got stagnant. But this was a team that played eight games in 22 days. And so when you think about that, not only is it a lot of travel, not only is it a lot of wear and tear on your legs, but it's not much practice. And that's really where he felt like they got away from a lot of their good habits. And it hurt them on the road. Their first true road game for many of these guys ever. You think about yes. Mark Williams and Jeremy Rose never played that level of game out on the road. Mark Williams with a couple of foul shots there. We get 2 nothing and the theft. Ben Carroll on the attack. He'll slam it down. Paulo off to the races. The nation's number one true freshman scorer to make it 4 to nothing. And Duke averages 9.1 steals per game, and that's what they want to do. Turn you over, turn that defense into offense, part of the reason why they score over 80 points per game. Way downtown, Edwards, that'll clang away. Tough rebound in traffic, and banked up and in by Davis, who's their number one shot blocker, gets about seven a game. And as far as points is concerned, seven points per game. Here's Wendell Moore. Now, you talk about a guy who is rounded into such a complete player. So many facets of the game. He's playing so well. He really is, Obi. And as a as an announcer, as an analyst, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I am extremely proud of that young man. When you consider what has happened throughout his Duke career, started off with a flourish. The game winner over North Carolina in Chapel Hill, which has injured a bit throughout his freshman season. But then when you come back, and as we get an opportunity to see Paolo Bancaro getting out in transition, an easy bucket for him. But as we talk Wendell Moore, last year was a struggle for him, especially early in the season. And then to be able to come back in his third year and be the guy that he's been, the playmaker, the leader, the veteran that he's been for this young team. It, I mean, it's just one of those things where you look at a young man like that and you see, hey, you don't have to be a one and done to be successful. Mm-hmm. They, sometimes it takes a little longer. Coach K told us earlier today, everyone has to run their own race, and Wendell Moore has done that. You look at the numbers, freshman, sophomore, and into this season, spectacular improvement. By the way, leading the ACC in assists. But he's become the point guard. He, he's really become the point guard for this team. And, of course, Jeremy Roach, who played predominantly the point guard position last year, has moved off the ball and allowed Wendell to be the primary playmaker and has been successful for this group. Sweet shot there by Dequan Williams, the 6'8 grad. And Coach Madlock, Tony Madlock of the Bulldogs says that he is an absolute beast. They expect him to have a big year in their conference. Rebounded here by Jamel Davis. And here come the Bulldogs. Deep in the corner, Jones, their top scorer, gets about 12 a game. Williams trying to go up, and guess who's in the way? Mark Williams with another deflection. But give the Bulldogs credit coming into this building. And oftentimes teams will play here, and guys for their first time come in and get starstruck. That has not been the case for South Carolina State. They have tried to take it to the chest of the Blue Devils, but that time Mark Williams won the battle. And when clangs away by Rasan Edwards, the 5'11 sophomore, but the follow is up and good. And keep an eye on number 20 for the Bulldogs. That is T.J. Madlock. That's the coach's son. 
and he's darn good too, 6'3 freshman. Absolutely, and got a game winner to his credit. Going on the road at South Florida, he's coming up with the game winner. And we see Trevor Keels holding the three fingers after knocking down the three. And Obi, that's another guy, in my opinion, who will be huge this season for Duke from beyond the three-point arc. Trevor Keels came into, into college basketball as one of the top shooters. Forget everything else that he does well. One of the top shooters in the class of 2021. You haven't seen it yet, but he's going to have one of those games where he runs off about seven or eight threes, and everyone will recognize that that's a strength of his offense. Kind of looking for that right now, but he's only hitting 30% beyond the three-point line. Williams with the catch, double up, and slapped away by the Bulldogs. The Devils, Blue Devils, will retain it with 14 on the shot clock. We're coming in, the number two team in the country. Their ACC opener, not that far off. On December 22nd, they'll invite in Virginia Tech. Duke going to the bench, Griffin into the contest. That's a travel on Ben Carroll. He will give it back to SC State. And Tony Madlock, excited about his group, said that one thing he knows, his guys are going to play hard. Not sure what the outcome will be, but knows that his guys will come in and compete. And coming over from Memphis, and of course a tremendous experience as an assistant coach, knows that that's the one thing that they can control, especially in a hostile environment that they'll be in tonight. Well, they had a terrible time of it last year. They won one game. They went one and 17. They've already won three times as many, so they're going in the right direction. And Coach Matlock in his first year, that's what he's simply trying to do, is build a culture of competing and also playing to be able to win not only in levels like this but to be able to win MEAC championships get his team into the NCAA tournament a great experience for them coming to Cameron Indoor swing on the baseline for Joey Baker who's hitting about 40 percent from three-point land and Duke with a three and they hit a couple early it's Keels on target once again yeah Obi I'm telling you this guy can flat out shoot the basketball you haven't seen it this year but this may be one of those games where he knocks down a bunch of threes and everyone recognizes that Trevor Kills is not just a driver, not just a guy who gets to the basket, gets to the free throw line, and plays strong. He also is very skilled. Van Carroll snags the rebound. Here come the Blue Devils. In two weeks since they last got to the hardwood. Man, that's an eternity in a college basketball season. Sweet little turnaround by Van Carroll. Speaking of skill. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of those. Talk about gifted. At 21 against Gonzaga, at 22 against Kentucky. So he's tended to show up when it matters the most. And a tough one against Ohio State, of course. He cramped up in that game from the corner, Edwards. And now they're all due to one Keels on the attack. Here's Moore, draws the foul. And Del Moore will be at the line to shoot two. Trevor Keels finding the range here early. Happy to be back on the Carolina State. You have to recognize you're going to have to go out and play some guarantee games. And Tony Matlock's gone out and won a game. <laughs> and I'm not sure anyone really invited South Carolina State to come in and beat them, but they went and got a win at South Florida. They go play in, of course, uh, no room for racism in Rock Hill, South Carolina on Friday. Knock off Tubby Smith and High Point. And right now, playing, of course, against the best competition in the country here at Cameron Indoor. Oh, tough shot here by Baker jumping in the lane after the turnover. And a 9-0 run for Duke. And we talk about guys who are going to be important for this Blue Devil team. Joey Baker is absolutely one of those. With Wendell Moore, he's one of the veterans on this team who's seen a lot. Of course, Joey Baker, a holdover from the Zion year where he burned his red shirt earlier that was So we know that Joey Baker has seen a lot of basketball. And his veteran experience and his shooting ability are going to be major this year. Shooting over 40% from three. And they're going to need that as the season goes along. Eight-point lead for Duke. Baker off the fake. And Del Moore trying to take the baseline. No contact there. Van Carroll. Strong up. And in. And a foul. And he'll be at the line. And OB, you mentioned it in your so eloquent description. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the... Other word, we talk about skilled earlier. Now we talk about strong. Paolo Bencaro, his ability to play through contact. 
is one of the reasons why, in my opinion, my humble opinion, which, of course, you know how humble that is, <laughs> is the number one draft pick. He when, should be the number he one. He should be number one, no question about it. And again, when you look at the number one pick in the NBA draft, you draft someone that can come in and help you right away. I love Chet Holmgren. I love his skill. I love Jabari Smith. I love his skill. But those guys are going to take longer to be impact players in the NBA. Paolo Bancaro is ready to go today. <laughs> sure is. We'll jump around the baseline. It won't drop to Davis. And tipped out of bounds off the Blue Devils. Right now listed as the number two ESPN NBA prospect. And I know you will effectively argue that point, and you are. Well, I will, because Mike Schmitz, of course, who's the guy behind that, got on air after the Gonzaga game and said, Paolo Bancaro has taken a step ahead of Chet Holmgren. So Paolo's been off really for the last two weeks. I'm not sure what happened, but I got to hit my man Mike Smiths up on that one. Gotcha. So after the turnover inside for Davis, but no basket. A foul instead with 13.06 to go here in the first half. And Duke opening up the 21-10 lead foul against the Bulldogs. And that foul will go against Omer Krosky, his first. Speaking of a guy having fun, how about Coach K? He is loose. I mean... We have done a lot of Duke basketball. We've seen a lot of Duke shoot around. Mm -hmm. Nothing looser than what I saw earlier coming in. The guys are jovial. They're having fun. Coach K's having fun. He's over. Of course, no, he enjoys joking me at any expense. He does like to, you know, get after you a little he, bit. He, he does. Has, he, he takes particular glee in that. He does. You know, and again, I'm a good sport. You, you are. Know, I mean, because, you know, one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not messing with the GOAT. <laughs> <laughs> well, nor should you as Roach unleashes. And knocks it down. He had the great line that came up to you and said, you, you ought to be working like midnight to 6 a.m. on the radio, man, because you sound sexy. He, 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 you know, he, that's the exact word? <laughs> sexy voice. Yeah. That's what he gave me, sexy voice. So, of course, he said, Corey, I think I need to see you on the 12 to 6 show. <laughs> right. I'm like, wait a minute, coach. But he did also say that I love to hear myself talk. <laughs> Duke with a turnover on the run out. I couldn't disagree with coach on that one. Oh, no. But I, I think you're right. Just look, this is the last season of a ridiculous career. I mean, you're talking about the greatest coach of all time, not just college basketball. He's in the discussion for any sport anywhere in the world all time as the greatest all time. Five national titles. Uh, not to mention, by the way, almost 100 wins in the NCAA tournament. And I need to make sure he gets at least 23 more this year. Because mm -hmm. we've seen, you know, Coach 1K. I like Coach 1.2K. I, I, th I think that works even better. And again, he has a team that allows it to be fun. He knows that this team has a chance to win a national championship on his way out. And he is enjoying every moment of it. Sure is. They're on top 24 to 10. The pass tipped. And so Duke will have it when we come. Goes back to, of course, his days on the gridiron. Talk with Paolo's mom, Rhonda, earlier today. She told me that Paolo actually stopped playing football after his freshman year, but he was a quarterback who actually won a state championship as a freshman quarterback at, in Seattle. So when you think about, you know, a 6'10 quarterback, you know, and with this type of athleticism, it's scary. It's scary to think about that. But I think he chose the right sport. Yes. I, I think he did choose the right so sport. So why is this? We're grateful that he did. But I would tell you this. Wouldn't it be fascinating to watch him still on the gridiron, as you say, at this side? Had he not had the growth spur that put him at 6'10 and made him commit to basketball solely, what a quarterback he would have been. Absolutely. And, Obi, you know, you talk about the growth spur. I saw Paolo this summer. And I asked him, I said, hey, what's, what's different about you than what I saw you two summers ago? Because, of course, didn't see him in 2020. Spent a lot of time with him in 2019. And he looks at me, I mean, as if I'm supposed to recognize this. And he says, where have grown two inches? I said, and of course me. No, you didn't. And so he calls Mark Williams over and says, Mark, come here. And he stands beside Mark, and I'm like, oh, you actually did grow. Mark Williams, who's 7'1". Yeah, 7'1". And I'm sitting there looking at him beside Mark, and I'm like, you are 6'10". He may be a little over 6'10", mm. but I think he claimed 6'11 at the time. No way I was given 6'11". Roach with the foul to put Oliver Hampton at the line. So do you think he's still growing? I don't know. He's just turned 19 years old. I'm not sure if he's still growing, but I know that he did grow at least two solid inches from the summer of 2019 
to the summer of 2021. And again, he didn't lose any of his perimeter ability. No. He watched him in shoot, in shoot around earlier today. He's working with the guards for the first half. Then he goes and works with the bigs for the second half. And I love the fact that Coach K does that. Is he allows Odell Powell as well as A.J. Griffin, both those guys, to be able to work with the guards and the bigs to round out that game, make sure they're more versatile. Hills quickly gets it on the offensive end. 24-12 Duke. Taking on SC State. Next up, they've got Appalachian State coming up on Thursday. That one poked away. And another turnover. Five of those for Duke. At times have been a little sloppy here in the first half. Williams couldn't get to that one. And laid in by Cameron Jones. He's the number one scorer on the team, the 6'6 sophomore out of Memphis. That's kind of what we would expect for a team that hasn't played in two weeks. Well, he's backed up and in with it. They tried the alley oop. That didn't work initially. But the 7-1 sophomore gets it to go. Yeah, this Duke team, fourth fewest nationally in turnovers per game, only eight and a half. And as you mentioned, already five turnovers in this game. That's a byproduct of not having played competitive basketball in those past two weeks. And Carroll airmailed that one. Williams went for the save and did save it on the baseline, but then it took another hop and it goes back over to the Bulldogs. SC State located in Orangeburg, South Carolina. They play in the Mid-Eastern Athletic with Norfolk State, Howard, Florida A&M, Poppin State. Tony Matlock trying to get his program on par with the Norfolk States, with the North Carolina Centrals, which of course is right here in Durham. You know, and one of the things for Coach Matlock in taking this job, he had to make sure that his athletic department was going to do everything they could to give them the same resources as those teams that he has to compete against. And right now, South Carolina State does not have 13 scholarships for basketball. And that's one of the areas where Coach Matlock has talked about, trying to grow this program, trying to build a program, and get more support from their alumni, from their boosters, and getting on an even playing field with their competitors. Well, the Sun had a good look out of the corner. Williams will commit the foul for the Bulldogs. That'll be number two on him. We mentioned his son, T.J. Matlock. It's interesting listen, listening to Tony talk about his son. He talks about him like it's just any other guy that he recruited. He said he's a legit three-star dude he can defend and because he can defend he's going to play right away absolutely and he also said that if tony has i mean if he had stayed at memphis he probably wouldn't have been able to recruit his son because it wouldn't have been a great scenario for him so therefore this was the perfect case scenario because he could not only bring his son with him he could bring his son who could contribute from day one and of course he doesn't have to have the issues with mom yes. when he gets home exactly. exactly right we all know that's a much bigger oh my well, more than anything times 10 roach will drill that one another good sign that he's hitting those just six for 24 from three 25% coming in, but as you said, the ability is there to hit that shot. It really is, and, and, and Jeremy Rose spent a lot of time with John Shire, of course, coaching, waiting after shoot around today, watching video, and these two guys really going over, not necessarily the mechanics of his shots, but the shots that he's taking, and you see that that's always going to be something that has to do with your percentage. It's the shots that you're taking. And Jeremy Roach is playing 33.3 minutes per game. He's leading Duke in minutes per game. And so it's not about not having the opportunities. It's about taking the right shots and the ones that help this team beneficial. Bates Jones at the line for a one and one a 6 eight grad. Now to Davidson will knock in the first one. Brother of New York Giants quarterback Daniel Jones of course. Well, tomorrow is National Signing Day for football. We'll have you covered right here on ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Packer and Durham get it going, 7 to 10 Eastern. And the Hubble crew will break it all down. All the ACC recruits taking you through each school with highlights and evaluations. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. Heck, it's our job. Pull up by Jones, and it won't drop for him. And Baker knocked down. He's filed on play with 46 remaining in the half. Obi, I think that should be at the end of that promo. It's our job. I See, I winged that. I just I, added I know, it. I but know I, you I, did. I kind of liked how it fit. It, 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 you know, it just flowed off your tongue correctly. It worked <laughs> again. And so, I'm not sure if this, you know what? We shouldn't add it because not everyone could do it the way you do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, even a blind dog. <laughs> so Baker to the line, the foul by Lawrence, the 6'6 freshman. 
Baker, 93% at the strike. And Joey Baker, we talked about his importance, and you mentioned it. You know, now 15 to 16 on the year from the free throw line. And when you think about it, this Duke team is going to have to play different ways throughout the year. There are going to be times where you have Ben Carroll at the five position. You can play Joey Baker at the four, especially in the game scenarios. But when you shoot free throws that well, you got to have a guy that can go to the line and make shots. This is not a great Duke free throw shooting team. You think about Ben Carroll shooting over 80 percent, and then you've got Joey Baker. But they're the top two free throw shooters on the squad right now. Oliver Hampton on the baseline harassed on that shot, but tipped out by the Blue Devils, who lead it 33-14. And the Bulldogs will bring on another big here. And Jones returning to the floor. Dallas, seven footer. And stepping off will be Oliver Hampton, the 6 8 grad. Tapped away by Baker on the theft. Ahead for more. Dribble down and he'll lay down. That's smooth as it gets. Great basketball, Joey Baker keeping his head up, looking at his record. He's the greatest in the history of the sport. Absolutely, but wasn't the greatest in this game. Actually went only one for eight in this building. He was the second best number 30. John Shire's team bested Davidson. And, the, and Coach Bob McKillop and Steph Curry, the NBA's all-time leading three-point shooter as of tonight. Woods finds the open man. Great stop there from behind by Baker, at least for a moment. And I'm, I'm wondering how it was that that was not called a jump ball because when you go up with the basketball and get blocked, you come down with it. That's yeah. a violation. Griffin will knock that one down. They keep on hitting the shots from distance. A.J. Griffin, the freshman. And right now, the Blue Devils knocking down threes, five for six from the field, from the three-point range. And when you consider this team and the firepower that they have, if they're able to add that weapon, mm -hmm. now you're talking about unstoppable. You know, they went to Ohio State, tough scenario, only went 4 for 14 from 3 there, and still almost won that game. They were close. So if you take that and you say they make two more threes out of those 14, they win that game. And so when you consider this Duke team, that's really been the one you know component that they haven't added to what is already a very potent offense. But it looks like it's starting to come around. The move there by Cameron Jones. It's not exactly lighting up himself, just 21% from the three point line, but he has six points here in the first half. Baker off the fake. And you see South Carolina State win the zone. You're going to find a lot of that if you're the Blue Devils. That's smooth, too. Wendell Moore, who has half a dozen. Because teams recognize they can't guard Duke man to man. So if you're going to go out and play them in a zone and you see great zone execution, finding Wendell Moore, who's not just a guy that plays on the perimeter, he can get him done in the paint as well. Oliver Hampton with a jumper, swishes that one in. 6-8 grad out of Palmer Park, Maryland. He's their top rebounder, but he can score two. We're talking with you know, Coach Matlock and the staff earlier today. I asked him, I said, hey, did your team come in and take a picture? With the D in the middle of the floor. Because everybody does that. Everyone does that. And I told him the story. I said, now, I've been here a lot of times when you know, teams have played here for the first time. And everyone comes in. They take a picture by the D. And they on Instagram Live showing me that they're in Cameron Indoor. And before they know it, they're down 20 to 2. Yes. I said, the one thing that you can't do in this building is come in and get starstruck. And they actually came out early and gave it a good fight. But as you look up now, it's a 23-point lead for the Blue Devils, and they don't look like they're slowing down with 6.05 remaining here in this first half. from the corner. Can't find a range there, and Cameron Jones with a rebound. Bulldogs hoping to cut in before half, just under six minutes to go. Dave O'Brien and Corey Alexander with you, and that one's going to be on target by Oliver Hampton, who's heating up. He has nine. And Hampton is really starting to show his arsenal. The mid-range jumper now knocking down the three, and... Nine points for him to lead the way early to South Carolina State. Duke finally home for a little spell after two weeks off, which had to feel like an absolute eternity for Coach K and his guys. Here's Moore. He's got a good look. Tough rebound by Jones, and he's hit with 5.25 left in the half. Duke trying for their eighth win of the season. And they've got App State coming up on Thursday. 
Guys just got done with their exams. In fact, many of them are taking the exams pretty late last night. Yeah, I got on Jeremy Roach and Trevor Kills this morning for being in the gym before they were. <laughs> so those two guys, of course, you know, and we talked about early haven't been shooting the three as well. So I was expecting for them to be the first ones on the court getting up shots today. But Roach did tell me, hey, I just finished taking the exam. Give me a break. And I had to let him off the hook at that point. Right. Well, tomorrow night we'll have the women's basketball game of the night right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Don Staley and number one South Carolina in Durham to take on number 19 Duke right here. Both teams coming undefeated. Our coverage begins at 7 with the Florida State men following this one. I know we're ACC Network, but my favorite ever point guard, Dawn Staley. Was with her at Virginia for one year mm -hmm. and watched her play and realized that I could not do the things that she could do with the basketball, which was a humbling experience to say the least. No basket there, but a foul inside the lane. And by the way, can absolutely flat coach. Oh, yeah. And man, has she gotten it going over the last several years to South Carolina. Here's a look at the last one. And Blakes does get his feet outside of the restricted area. Steps in, takes the charge. By Oliver Hampton, yep. 45-23 Duke. Roach with a bounce here. Ben Carroll back for Roach. Shot clock down to 12. He'll swing it up top and swished in by Blakes, the freshman out of Somerset, New Jersey. And Blakes hasn't played in the last two games, didn't play in the Gonzaga game or Ohio State game. Still as a freshman trying to find his way into the rotation. But John Shire says that he's a very good player for them and he's going to help them not just next year, but this year as well. Gills threw it away and now they give it right back. Ben Carroll trying to spin inside and a blocking foul. That will go against T.J. Madlock of the Bulldogs. His first. Seven turnovers already for the Blue Devils here in this first half. And Paolo Ben Carroll trying to spin to the basket, of course. That's the second time he's gone to that move. Madlock waiting for it, but this one will get Paolo to the free throw line. The first one, I believe, was offensive foul. Freshman out of Seattle. Who makes 84% at the line. He has 10 points so far in the first half. And Roach will step out and more back on now for Coach K. <laughs> and I love it. Roger Ayers having a conversation with Paolo because Paolo had a little something to say <laughs> to someone from South Carolina State on their way off the floor. <laughs> But again, Roger Ayers going over immediately having, hey, let's not do that today. Quick conversation, and it's over and done with. Jamie Steins and Les Jones also on the fine crew here tonight working this game. And a foul, offensive foul, will go against Dallas James, a seven-footer. His first. That's a smart play by Ben Carroll, just stepping in, recognizing when you've got a guy coming at you out of control, Got to work on his fall, though. We, we, got, we got to work on that fall. I don't like him going back on a bended knee like that. You got to go down, you know, with your leg straight. You know, I wasn't much of a charge taker myself, Obi. I'm not. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't be criticizing anybody. Or coaching, right, necessarily. But do as I say, not as yes. I do. There you go. He's going to turn over. KJ, I know, yeah. of course, KJ, we got to get him up to speed on all the names. Right. right. But da Dallin yeah. should know better than that. There's a, there's a whole list. I mean, there's, you can follow along at home if you like. Yeah. We'll get to it over the course of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Our Full first time by together. Madlock, yes. Some people may have forgotten. May have, some, some have, on purpose, I think. <laughs> Jones had it batted right to him in the lane, and he'll stick it. Now looking forward to the entire ACC schedule with you as more launches and switches in the three. And Duke now eight made three-pointers here in the first half. Their season high is 12 on the year. But they, believe it or not, they went and won the first game of the year at, against Kentucky in Madison Square Garden. They went one for 12 from three. Mm. And that's really where the question mark came up as to whether or not, you know, how well this team could shoot it this year. 
Gary backs up for three. That won't drop for him. Keels. Tough angle, but he lays it in. That's a quick strike by the Blue Devils. You know, ball movement was one of the keys throughout this two-week stretch. Talking to John Shire, talking to Nolan Smith about, you know, what did you guys want to focus on? And both told me it was about ball movement. They got stagnant against Ohio State. It was a little too much one-on-one. -on -one. And you can tell that that emphasis had gone in, and the guys have accepted it here early in this game. Jones with a scoop. No. And a battle for the rebound and tied up on the play. Ben Caro in there. You see Paolo Ben Caro pushing the break and finding Trevor Kills. That was a little look away because it was originally going to break. He's on the deck and he'll stay on this end. By the way, Theo John, you probably noticed if you've been following Duke, does not appear in this game. He will not play tonight. Unable to get loose, does not feel 100%, so he's sitting this one out. And Theo John, the only the second ever. Okay, now, I may need to see a replay this one. <laughs> that threw my thought process all off. Mark Williams walks away as if there were a block. I don't think Mark Williams touched this basketball. Yeah, that was just a bad missed dunk attempt. Mm. Um, yeah, it was really good. <laughs> Yes, that's something we can see on not top ten on Friday. <laughs> Very well, good. <laughs> because for a split second, it looked like it's just a rejection. Yeah, but he did not touch it. No. So coming up on two minutes to go in the half. 54-25, Duke. Wendell Moore has really put together a terrific season. Will drive it and kick it. Swung up top for Keels, who's been hopping on three. Going to go underneath instead. Over the ball. Leaning inside. Another scoop attempt. That won't drop for Williams. Ben Carroll had it batted away. SC State last to touch it. Ball movement has been spectacular for Duke early in this game. You look at this first half, 13 assists already. Now, the eight turnovers are high, but this Duke team average, I mean, is, has a 2.07 assist to turnover rate. So they're going to have to get those those assists way up, which they have done. Griffin and a strong A.J. Griffin. The one big game this season. He had 18 points against Lafayette, but not many since then. And he's going to be kicked out. And back over to the Blue Devils. Now Griffin was injured in the preseason. Spent a little time on the shelf and really hasn't been able to regain his form outside of that Lafayette game where he scored a career high 18 points, but knocked down four threes. Oh! Blake's going for the dunk. Batted away from him. Here comes Madlock. Nice shovel pass, but it's short by Jones, who's having a tough one here at Cameron Indoor. Ripped away by Blake's. Here's Keels who went for the slam and draws the foul with just over a minute to go in half. Duke getting out in transition. And defensive balance for South Carolina State has not been good so far. I'm sure that's something that Coach Matlock would talk to his team about in the halftime locker room. Duke getting way too many runouts and opportunities for layups in transition. Keels with eight points heading to the line. He's averaging 12 points per game. And a 67% foul shooter. And we'll have a college basketball triple header for you Saturday afternoon right here at ACC Network. We start at 2 Eastern. Virginia taking on FDU. And then it's Duke against Cleveland State at Cameron Indoor. We cap the day with Buddy Bayheim and Syracuse taking on Lehigh, the Carrier Dome. Great afternoon of hoops coming your way. As a kid, I bet you did the same thing. When you had a triple header coming up, college basketball, you never left your spot. You, you found your seat wherever it was. I used to hide in my dad's office, turn on his little TV, and I wouldn't leave the room for like 10 hours. I would go play on my nerf hoop on the back of my door at halftime. At half I had to make sure I got back before the second half started, but half times I had to go work on my game. Yes, slam down on the follow by Williams. I like Williams right there, crashing the glass, coming up with the big bucket. 
Final seconds of the first half. Total domination here by the Blue Devils. Not unexpected. Edwards tried to give it up into the lane. He slaps it free back out to Madlock. And he'll find the open man, but could not knock that one down. But King Gray, he had an opportunity for a bunny, but he missed it. 60 to 27. Blue Devils lighten it up beyond the three-point line. And Carroll will put it to the deck. And from 14 feet, left it short. And that's the end of the first half. And it's Pearson. Summary, so the three-point shots we mentioned, Duke 8 out of 11. The Bulldogs just 1 for 11. Fast break points. Look at that advantage. Duke 20 zip. Start the second having a slam by Mark Williams. Well, and Duke wanted to go inside on the first possession of the game in the first half and was unsuccessful with it. This time, they <laughs> get tremendous success. Mark Williams just showing off his strength under the basket. Jamel Davis trying to weave his way toward the basket, got shut down and misfired. Wendell Moore, first half, had 11. Van Carroll with 10. Trevor Keels also got into double figures with 10 points. Zero assists for the ACC's assist leader, though, Wendell Moore. So I'm sure that's something he's going to be looking to drop some dimes here in the second half. Nifty fake by Roach, but it's in and out. And Duke trying to win for the eighth time this season. Long three coming up, and that'll go off the back iron. Picked off by Moore. Williams putting it to the deck. Back inside for the big man, and a good play defensively by Jamel Davis to pick it off. Now stolen right back by Roach. Keels to the paint. Almost gave it up. And Wendell Moore will settle things down here. Keels hit a couple of quick threes to get the offense started. Now he's going to drive and kick for Roach. Here's a three. Beautiful basketball. And Trevor Keels gave up a layup to find his high school and now college backcourt made Jeremy Roach in the corner for the three ball. An unselfish play by Trevor Kills. And 65-27 is the lead balloons for the Blue Devils. Here's Jones. That clangs away from three-point land. And Carroll putting it to the deck. Poked away for a moment. And now Wendell Moore will set it up coming in averaging 18 points. Seven rebounds, hitting 56% of his shots, and also leading the ACC in assists. Over the top, that would have been a tough play for anyone. And Davis in the open floor, and he'll slam it down. In the first fast break points in the game for South Carolina State, who, as you mentioned, Duke dominated 20 to 0 in the first half. Duke held that advantage, but South Carolina State had 13 offensive rebounds in the first half. I'm sure that's something that Coach K had a conversation with his guys about because that's not something you want to build a habit of allowing teams to come into your building and beat you up on the offensive glass. Yeah, overall, actually, a rebounding Duke in the first half, 23 to 20, and a whistle here with 17-14 to go. And a foul against the Bulldogs. And that is going to be number three. On Cameron Jones, who has not been able to get going, came in as their leading scorer, and Duke has done a very good job on him. And I believe that is the underrated part of this Blue Devil team. Defensively, they're good. You know, and, and Coach K talked to us earlier today about the reason Baylor won last year is because they're so good defensively. And he and, and simply said, that's what wins you national championships. So when you think about this Duke team, and the way they play defensively, they turn you over, they get out of transition. But you've got guys, you know, Trevor Kills especially, who loves to get after defensively on the perimeter. Of course, Mark Williams, Paolo Bancaro, both can get it done defensively in the post. And Wendell Moore is a very good defender too. So when you look at this Duke team, they have the personnel to be very good defensively. And it showed early in the season. Well, you've got to play defense if you're going to play for Duke. Sweeping inside and two there for Madlock. He is four. In the ball game, 66 to 31. Here's Keels attacking up top for Williams, puts it to the deck and slams it home. And now the pick, Ben Carroll. He's fouled. 
He'll be at the line. So no slowing down for the Blue Devils here despite the two-week layoff since the last time they played. Well, when you're at this stage of the game, and I, of course, haven't played in as many of them as Coach K has coached, but for these starters, they know the second half they're not going to get many opportunities. They better take advantage of it while they can. And Caro to the line. And tomorrow is National Signing Day for football. We've got you covered on the ACC Network in the ESPN app. Early morning coverage begins with Packer and Durham from 7 to 10 a.m. And then the huddle crew breaks it all down. The ACC recruits taking you through every school with highlights and evaluations. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. You didn't tag it. It's our job. There you go. <laughs> You were waiting on me. I was waiting. You were the one, Corey. <laughs> Look of absolute terror on your face there. Oliver Hampton will kick that one away. 16-32 left here at Cameron Indoor. And Roach to bring it across for Coach K. Looking for career win, 1,178 here tonight. Keels sweeping in. And gets it to go and he'll be at the line. That's what you call a tough bucket. I believe that we got a little flex from Trevor Kills on the way down as well. And you see with the attention being paid to Ben Caro, Trevor, Trevor Kills finding a scene. There we go. I knew it was a little flex. Just a little flex from Trev going to the ground, but when you talk about strong, this young man and has the ability to attack the basket, he defends. That's really the probably the underrated part of his game is the way he defends. Strong enough to guard bigger players as well as quick enough to guard guys who are at his speed. And so when you think about Trevor Kills, his ability offensively and defensively really gives this Duke team a bonus, can be a playmaker as well. He's had a nice night, two 14 points for Trevor Kills. Here's Oliver Hampton to knock down a shot. A two-pointer, give him 11. Nobody, you know, we talk about college basketball, and one of the rules to having success in college basketball is to get old and stay old. That is the complete opposite of this Blue Devil team. <laughs> when you look at this group, Wendell Moore is a junior. He just turned 20 years old. He is extremely young for a college basketball player who came in the group at age 17. And Mark Williams just turned 19 last week. Young group still up 40 getting it done here at home. We mentioned the last couple of games shooting four for 20. But remember the Kentucky game in the opener, he dropped 25 against the Wildcats. And he has that ability, and you know, ranked number 23 nationally coming out in the class of 2021. In my opinion, way better than number 23. They're not 23 guys that came into college basketball but left high school as good as Trevor Keels. But you have not seen his best ability yet. He is a knockdown shooter. And you've seen a little bit of it to start this game off. But I, I see Trevor Kills having a game against big-time competition where he knocks down three, four, or five and keep it going on threes. Missed from three there and in transition. One of the rare times they've been able to do that tonight. The Bulldogs trying to attack. Knocked out of bounds by Duke. Raekwon Brown, a 6'3 sophomore, now into the contest for SC State. Playing a tough schedule. Road games at Georgia, Duke, and South Carolina. Down 40 here. Long one on the way by Lawrence. And rebounded by Griffin. Griffin thought about stepping into a three. Drives it instead and drops in two. Like that play by A.J. Griffin attacking the basket. Not settling. Using his physicality to be able to score two points in the paint. Lawrence off his own miss. No. Won it back for a moment. Another scramble for it. Here's Cameron Jones. And he'll score it. He hasn't had many highlights tonight. Their top player. But there's one. He has 10. Here's Baker from the corner. He can hit that all day. And 
Again, Joey Baker knocking down the three, but that is the fifth assist in the game for Paolo Bancaro. And when you think about it, that's why I think he's NBA ready. Because at that size, at 6'10", you know, I'm not sure what he weighs, but it's a lot of muscle, whatever it is. He can make plays off the dribble. The NBA is about being able to beat your man one-on-one. Kyle -on -one. can do that already right now. Well, you can see that, can't you? You can see him in an NBA uniform right now making an impact tonight in the league. On the reverse, it won't fall for Jones. 78-35, the Blue Devils. And good tonight defense by Oliver Hampton there. Got it out for Brown, and Brown will take the foul, and he'll be at the line to shoot here a little over 13 minutes to go. When you talk about the league, talk about the ACC, and we're not that far from moving into ACC play. The Blue Devils will take on Virginia Tech here on December 22nd to get their conference season rolling. You've got Duke. You've got Carolina. Who else do you have who might have a chance to contend? Well, right now, I think that the ACC is really in a period of transition when you consider the fact that so many teams are trying to incorporate new pieces into their culture, into their system. Florida State has six newcomers. Virginia is starting two transfers. So those two, and we say recent powers of the ACC have not been as good this year. The Traditional powers Duke and North Carolina. I think North Carolina has a chance to be really really good But talk with coach K earlier. We talked to him about the fact that The ACC is being judged Upon what they do in the non-conference mm -hmm. Coach K and I both agree that we should wait till January February before we start going with that judgment especially when it comes time to determine which teams will play in the NCAA tournament solely based upon teams are going to be much better in January and February than they are in November, December. But if you base everything upon non-conference play, determining how good the conference is, the ACC is not going to fare very well when it comes to the number of teams. you look at, like Leonard's program at Florida State, which has been so good for so many years, off to a very choppy start, but, you know, fast forward a month from now, what are they going to look like? And, and that's what Coach Hamilton will tell you. And that's what Coach K will tell you. And you see each and every one of these teams, you know, they're going to get better based upon, you know, iron sharpens iron. Playing in this league, playing against this level of competition, each and every one of these teams are going to get better and will be able to do damage in March, which is when I think that we truly should judge how good a competition. is. And no more beyond the three-point line. And lost it for a moment right to Jones. Duke with a giant lead, 81-37. Batted away again on that line and scooped up by Madlock. And he leaned over the line with the basketball. Wendell Moore there to pick Jones up because Jones actually saved Wendell two turnovers on that one possession. <laughs> two. <laughs> Save two turnovers, and if you're Wendell, you got to appreciate a teammate willing to get on the floor, come up with a loose basketball, and save you a turnover. Baker off the inbounds, can't connect. Duke has been loading up on the threes. They've had seven different players hit at least one three-pointer so far tonight. And that's a welcome sight to this Duke staff. Again, that's the missing piece. So what has been a great season thus far is can they shoot the three with consistency? Takes misfiring on that one. 81-37. You know, Obi, this is the time of year where you really get to improve because now with exams being over, no classes, you've got a stretch where it's just about basketball for the next two, three weeks, and you can really improve as a team during that stretch. Baker with the kick. Here's Jones. Baker getting a lot of minutes here. And as we move deep into the second half, Jones trying to float to the basket. Batted away by the Bulldogs. And a timeout with 11 16 to go. Or more number two picks and number three picks to add. I mean, of course, Jason Tatum, the number three pick in the draft. But when you look at, you know, Paolo Bancaro and his ability, you know, physicality, of course, it, that should be an A+. Plus. And then his ball handling is an A. His shooting 
A minus. We had a conversation about that earlier. When he holds his follow through, he can be a knockdown shooter. When he shoots it cute, he doesn't make as many. You know, but again, he's a young man who's not only coachable, but he works hard and is willing to put the work in. And that's what you want from a guy that you're going to make a strong investment in. You're talking possibly hundreds of millions of yes, dollars. A very strong investment. You want a young man like this, high character person, but who puts the work in and, and loves playing basketball. That's the biggest characteristic that I would say about Paolo. Also about Trevor Kills, about Mark Williams. These guys love the hoop, and that's one thing that's important in today's game. Oliver Hampton short. Griffin, who just had a rejection moments ago. Good piece of defense by the youngster. 84 37. And you've known Paulo for a long time. And you know him in ways that a lot of analysts doing college basketball doing his games right now, they don't know him quite as well as you do. They, they don't. And I, and I know mom. And so, More importantly, you and, know mom. And so, and the reason why I say he's coachable and I talk about his character is because Paolo will be the first one to tell you, I don't do anything without mom. And again, so so that says a lot to me. If, and I'm, I'm sorry, Rhonda, for saying this publicly. If it were up to Paolo, he would have been at Duke last year. Really? Reclassed up. Mm -hmm. However, she wasn't ready for her baby to leave Seattle. <laughs> so, so therefore, he waited out, and of course, the perfect timing for him. But if it were up to him, he would have been here last year. Playing for the Nice patience there by Griffin. Dropped it to the deck and dropped in two. And Duke already making a run at 100 points, 86 to 39. So once again, abusing a Bulldog team. Nice effort there by TJ Madlock, the coach's son. Freshman out of Memphis with two and a foul. This is Duke against just Bulldog teams, as, as Corey said early in the game. You could go on and on with this list of Bulldog teams that Coach Gay's knocked off in his career, but Gardner Webb the first, then the Citadel, and of course number one Gonzaga, the Bulldogs in a great game, 84-81. That actually, I mean, that was an unbelievable college basketball game when you think about that. I can remember, and I was actually in Vegas on Thursday and left Vegas getting home. And after Thanksgiving, just making sure that I was in front of a TV mm -hmm. to watch that game. And I have to admit, rooting for the Blue Devils <laughs> in that one. I talked big stuff while I was doing the Maui Jim Maui Invitational about what Duke was going to do to Gonzaga. Yeah. And I'm just glad my guy stepped up and got it done. Well, I know you, you know, you bleed ACC, so that's the reason for that. Edwards with a pull up pop and he'll swish that in. But I didn't think anybody was going to do something like that to Gonzaga after watching them dismantle UCLA in Las Vegas. Well, you were there. I was over at Team Mobile doing that game with Dickie B. And they looked untouchable at that point, but it was only a matter of a few days later that Duke knocked them off. They really were. And great moment, by the way. You welcoming Dickie B back. Of course, you know, I'm not going to say that you brought a tear to my eye, but I will say that I was very happy to see you guys. I'm not going to admit to crying on national TV. Yeah. But I was happy to see you guys back. And you being there, of course, I know your story passed with Dickie B, and I'm glad you had that opportunity to be the first person that he worked with well, coming back thank you so this much. year. I was, too, believe me, as Edwards will drop in a long-range three here just to see Dick Vitale back where he belongs. I mean, he's a national treasure. You know that. I know that. Everybody in that building knew it, and it was so emotional, and it was gripping stuff. And I'll tell you what, if the camera hadn't cut away, I was about to lose it in about three seconds. So I'm glad the game started. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful to have the great Dick Vitale back at the microphone. Turned over, and a whistle is 7.50 to go. Quick moving second half. And we have a ounce of energy and passion I have for this great game into this program, this university. I cannot wait to roll my sleeves up and get to work. And right now, when you look at this Duke athletic administration in general, brand new athletic director, new football coach, soon to be new head basketball coach, times are changing here in Durham. But I'm sure the Duke faithful expecting the same level of excellence that they've always had here at this fine university. And you you mentioned it earlier. You asked me off camera, what do we think Coach K is going to do when he 
when he steps away, when he retires, yeah. I mean, what, as, what as, a, as an active coach, I mean, obviously that's that's what he's done and the incredible legacy. And he's not going to walk away from basketball. He's going to be involved in some way, and he's in incredible demand as a national public speaker. I'm, I don't know if people really realize how active he is there. And in a lot of other things, he's got a lot of interests. And Griffin will switch that in right at the shot clock buzzer. But, you know, what will he be doing? What will he really be focusing his energy on after he leaves the court here? Well, and again, you mentioned public speaking. I, one thing that you don't get to see, the, the outsider does not get to see the sense of humor that you know the coach K has and again you know we're, we're fortunate to be able to be in a scenario where we can sit and talk to him and shoot around and I, of course had players that he's recruited and spent time around them on the road etc and I think you'll get people will get to see a lot more of that once he's finished mm -hmm. you know what I would love for him to do call a basketball game oh I would love for coach K to call a game not a Duke game <laughs> But to call a basketball game, just one. He doesn't have to do it for a career, but I would love for him to just be able to come and do it what do you and think? see his I mean, input you've on You've known him a long time. You played against him. He coached against you. You guys have been rivals, but you've also been friends. Do you think that's something that would appeal to him? I think it would. And, and, and again, I know that, you know, of course, Dick Vitale gets the, the load of credit, the bulk of the credit for ESPN becoming what it is today and, and rightfully so he should but this Duke basketball program plays a part into that as well oh boy. Yeah. and and not only that coach K and again I can't tell the story but when he's done I hope he tells the story as to how he saved ESPN relationships with the ACC and again, I, I would love for that story to be told in his memoirs, et, et cetera. Right. But, you know, when you think about that, you know, I think that he would be great at it. And, of course, we also have to recognize he was great friends with Jim Valvano. Yes. You can't be around Jim Valvano and not have the personality to do this. <laughs> Coach K definitely has the personality to do it. I would like to see him just give it a shot. Hey, he's done everything else so great. Give it a shot. All right, we've got a lot of Duke games, gratefully, coming up this season, and we're going to get a chance to spend considerable time in this final season for Coach K at Duke around him. And at some point, we've got to ask him, that. I mean, would you consider coming to the broadcast position and doing a game as an analyst, not a Duke game, not a North Carolina game, doesn't even have to be an ACC, could be anything. But would you like to try it? Would you like to do I bet he'd be intrigued because he, he does a little broadcast work. You know, he does a podcast, which I've heard is a great show. He has amazing guests. Amazing guests. All around sports. Maybe there's a broadcast bug there. I, and, it, and it very well could be. Again, I would I definitely don't want to see him go away from the game. And again, you know, he he will be involved. But again, I, I just think that he has, you know, if you start talking storytelling. He and Jim Beheim, who can have more stories? Sure. I mean, you, you, okay, you think about the fact that he's been here 42 years. He's been coaching for 47 years, I believe, overall. But let's not talk about the fact that he was the head coach of the Olympic team for 2008 to 2016. He was assistant coach on the Dream Team. Right. Can you imagine right. all the stories that this man has gathered over the past 40-plus years you know, as a basketball coach? I think you bring up a great point, too. As SC State's at the line, Daquan Williams, a 6A grad out of Camden, New Jersey. You, you bring up a great point about those gold medals and his service as a coach for the U.S. national men's team and all of that success. I think every American owes him a debt for the work he's done uh, coaching the national teams and being incredibly successful in that over and above what he's done at Duke. And take it over at a time where... The USA basketball was not at the top, you know, coming off of the 2004 where where USA won a bronze medal and 2008 was the redeemed team, but not and, and people think, OK, well, it was just 2008. No, it was 2005 through 2008 getting that team together yep. and playing in all the qualifying events, establishing a culture that is now USA basketball. 96-51 Blue Devils closing in on 100 points already with Still about five minutes to go. Into the corner and Blake 
Did not touch the iron. So 4.38 to go. And Mike's grandson able to get into the contest. And Michael Savarino was the first Duke player on the court getting up shots today. So being rewarded for coming in, getting his work in early. And at this point, I've got to make sure Michael Savarino gets an opportunity to knock down a three because he got his work in early. And he had a special fan. Nolan Smith actually brought his daughter in today mm -hmm. and who was sitting by herself playing on her iPad watching Savarino shoot. So... You know, of course, I was Uncle Corey was kind of keeping an eye on her babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Corey at work. And a block underneath by Bates Jones to force the turnover. And he'll launch from that corner. And Savarino can't hit this one. That's all right. He was locked and loaded. Catch and shoot, ready to go. <laughs> That's going to go to Tenning. So count that basket. And a block attempt by Bates Jones. Coach K, 18 points for him in that game where he went four for six for three. So you look at this Blue Devil team, the balance scoring is a direct reflection of the sharing the basketball, which was a point of emphasis by the Duke basketball staff throughout this two-week break to make sure they weren't just going one-on-one, -on -one, trying to make individual plays, sharing the basketball, getting everyone involved on the offensive end of the floor. Did you ever have... Well, you were playing college basketball a break that long? No, other than when I broke my ankle and I had to stop the whole season. But right. other than that, <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, two weeks is a very long time in the middle of a season to not have any games. And, you know, one of the things, and, and you know, talking with Coach Hay earlier, he let us know that, but it wasn't as though they really got a tremendous amount of practice time because if you think about the past 10 days, they were dealing with exams. And as the... <laughs> Duke is closing in on 100 points, 96 to 55. A little over three minutes to go, just two on the shot clock here. Get the inbound. Duke has it rejected. And South Carolina State will have the ball back. She knocked out a play here, so there was a foul on the play. And tomorrow night, we'll have the women's basketball game of the night right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Don Staley and number one South Carolina in Durham to take on number 15 Duke. Both teams come in undefeated. Our coverage begins at 7 for the Florida State men and Lipscomb following that one. We talked Don Staley in our first half. We did that promo. Uh, Duke's women's program got a pretty good... Former players and coach as well. <laughs> Karen Lawson, awesome. Karen and I worked together um, a number of times doing the uh, Chris Paul CP3 Elite Point Guard Camp, which Jeremy Roach, Wendell Moore Jr. both taking a part in. And uh, Kara is an excellent basketball mind. Sure is. You start with that, but then of course, you know, as a former player, her credibility level is off the charts. She's a gym rat too, so you got a, the recipe for success here for the Blue Devils. I believe I was her first broadcast partner. I might be wrong about that by a game or, or two, but we did a women's NCAA tournament. It was her first major gig. We did four games in one day. And in the first game, she was working the telestrator. She had never done it before. And everyone was amazed how good she was on the telestrator. And we were like, Kara, you've never done this before? She said, no, but I'm having the time of my life. I love breaking this stuff down. I knew then she was going to be a coach one day. Absolutely. I mean, NBA coaching experience. And now with her own opportunity to run her own program. And, and like you said, she just picks up everything. As we go over 100, is that my guy Savarino? Yes, it was Savarino. That was my three. guy Savarino knocking down the three ball. He put the work in early, Obi. I can respect that. And it was the great ball movement once again. The ovation from the crowd. A great find from A.J. Griffith. One more as Michael Savarino knocks down the three to send the Blue Devils. Over 100 points. Loudest ovation of the night, I think. It really has been. And again, we have to mention that 
The Cameron crazies are different. They're crazier or maybe not as crazy in this game because these aren't all students. Right. The students are finished with exams. Uh oh. Severino with the theft and will lay it up. And it's actually Les Jones, I think, who kicked it. <laughs> and the, the even better reaction. The, blue, <laughs> the Duke bench, not the coaches, but the players up telling Les Jones, get out of the way. That's our basketball. It went off of you. And Les Jones enjoying it, of course. <laughs> about a minute and a half to go. So Duke about to be eight and one. You know, knocking some rust off after the two week layoff after that defeat to Ohio State, which came on the heels of a great win against Gonzaga. Gary with a step back, can't hit the three. Back to the Bulldogs. And Lawrence will draw the foul with a minute 11 showing. Duke, of course, briefly number one. Feels like everybody has briefly been number one here early in the season. It hasn't been easy to hang on to that. And as Coach K mentioned to us earlier, it just shows the equity in college basketball right now. You're going to have, you know, you've got some teams that have separated themselves that are better. and But once they get to number one, they get knocked off. We've seen Gonzaga number one. We've seen the Blue Devils. We've seen Purdue. And now it's Baylor, I believe. And then when you think about, you know, the Baylor program and what Scott Drew's been able to do down there playing in the Big 12, they're going to have to run into Kansas. They're going to have stiff competition that they'll be playing relatively soon. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another number one relatively soon. Sure. That's been the pattern. And we'll have a college basketball triple header for you on Saturday. ACC Network and the ESPN app. Start at 2 o'clock, Virginia and FDU, and then it'll be the Duke Blue Devils against Cleveland State here at Cameron Indoor. We capped the day with Buddy Bayheim and Syracuse taking on Lehigh's Carrier Dome, and a terrific afternoon. Hooks and that one stuffed in by Wellington. Even Wellington with a basket. And Mark Williams, Apollo Beck Harris celebrating on the sideline as if they had the dunk. And this is a sign of a great team. When your starters celebrate, it's the opportunity for guys who they know come out and practice hard, getting an opportunity to get it done in the games, and including everyone in the success. This is really when you know you've got a chance to be special. But they reacted like that was in the final four at the buzzer. They, they really did. They're running all over the place, having a great time. The final seconds here at Cameron Indoor. Jones will get it to Blakes. And Duke sailing tonight. Certainly anticipated. Getting over 100 points. Six Duke players in double figures. Led by A.J. Griffin with a career high 19. And there's the final horn.